affair of sex have been called a lot of things over the last hundred years. Ladies, dames, broads, chicks, but I prefer gals. Gals are the type who can powder their nose as they kick a few butts. Janes who ain't afraid to pull up their sleeves, dive in and break a few nails to get the job done right. This is our story and, and I'm sticking to it. But I want you, those goddamn pants get in the way. Sexual liberation meant never being able to say no to the fellas. So some gals started talking about it, getting together in what they called consciousness raising groups. They talked about lots of stuff that they never talked about when the fellas were around, and they found they weren't alone. Lots of sharing happened. Women's health books like Our Bodies, Ourselves were passed around, and they talked about S-E-X and C-H-O-I-C-E. -E. They learned a new mantra, no means no, and they took it to the streets. In the 60s, we got the pill and the sexual revolution. We weren't even persons in the legal, legal sense of the word. That meant us Janes had no say in how the country was run or what the rules were. In fact, the only property a gal could own were the pair of shoes she stood up in and a handbag to match. The fight for the right to vote was a full meal deal. And it was a fight, all right. A big bust up, just so we could say, I'm equal to you, Charlie. That's the way it is, and that's the way we're writing it down. And it was worth all the pain and suffrage it took. Take Nellie McClung, for instance. Now, there was a busy gal with a mission. She was a suffragist, a writer, a journalist, and eventually a politician. But first, she and her sisters had to get the right to vote from fellas who thought women voting was unladylike. But our Nell had a sense of humor. <laughs> 